So a lot of you guys know that one of my lathes here is a Victor lathe. This is a Victor 1660. It used to belong to my dad. Uh, it is uh, somewhere around the late 70s, early 80s model, but I want to say it was probably a uh, late 70s uh, whenever this one was built. But uh, anyway, one of the problems that I've had with this lathe for quite a, quite a while now, and it, it seems to just be getting a little bit worse each year, is chatter problems. And I've talked about that in a lot of my previous videos whenever I'm trying to use a parting tool, a grooving tool, or a radius tool, or any kind of tool where you're taking a a, a pretty healthy cut uh, just wants to chatter a lot and the only way to get around that is to run it like at its lowest speed just go in real slow and use plenty of oil and I can usually get in there and do grooving that way or parting so I want to go ahead and see if we, we can correct the issue and it should be an adjustment of the main spindle bearings so we're gonna go into this thing I've already uh, got everything loose here cleaned it off we'll talk about that because we want to make sure that we don't get any like chips down in there as well and uh, let's take this lid off and see if we can do a, um, a uh, main spindle bearing adjustment on this and get it running better. I'm going to be referred to the Victor lathe manual right here and I wanted to uh, give thanks to Ray and Matt over there at Ozark Tool Manuals. They're the ones that uh, give me this, this uh, manual some time back or actually earlier in the year. Uh, they sent this to me. So if you've got a machine tool that you're needing a manual Give these guys a, a call or an email there. Chances are, if they don't already have one ready, that they, uh, they have a, a library full of machine tool manuals that they can print a manual out for you. All right. So going into the manual here, there's only one small little section right here that refers to the adjustment of the main spindle bearings. All right. So you have two nuts inside there. One is listed as A, one is B. All it says, firstly, loosen nut A and adjust nut B, then lock A. That's all it says. That's all I get for adjustment of the spindle bearing. So um, while very, being very simple, there's also one back here on this end, and it doesn't say anything about this bearing here. Maybe it says it's somewhere else in the manual, but if it does, I haven't found it yet. So this is what we're gonna do right there. We'll loosen A and adjust nut B, and, and then we'll do some uh, test cuts and see if it actually helps improve the chatter. All right, so we're ready to go ahead and take the cover off. I want to show you this one little tip. Uh, a lot of times when you go to take something like this off, like the lid to help headstock, a lot of times it's kind of, you know, stuck to the other mating surface. And just take a uh, soft blow hammer, just like this guy right here, and just go around. Just tap on it and it'll usually kind of break it loose. And whenever I was doing that, I can see it jumping right there, so I know that it's loose. And so I cleaned it thoroughly. This is this one's pretty bad. About you see, you got these seams right here, all along, all around this edge, and especially right up behind this little uh, plate right here, you get packed in there. So I made sure that I wiped everything out really, really good, cleaned it with some cleaner before we take this off here. Let's see. Okay can't grab it, so to tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my Duressa ice pick and just kind of get the corner up started. Just like that. There we go. Just enough where I can get my finger started underneath that, that guy. There's a gasket under there, so I was trying not to tear it. All right, here we go. Take the lid off. Set it down over here. And what you want to make sure of before you do anything, it's come in here and clean all this out right along these edges right here and make sure that nothing gets down in there. So wipe it all out, take you a shot back, come around and suck everything out right there. And then just make sure you do that before you proceed. All right, we got the perimeter of it cleaned right there. Cleaned it, vacuumed it, wiped it off. So inside the uh, the top of the headstock here, you can kind of see right here, we've got a channel 
there's a channel and oil flows down there and so you've got a hole there where it flows into the bearing there it looks like there's another hole right there where the oil flows down i don't see one in the center right here so i'm assuming that it's getting splash lubrication there for that center bearing so this is one that we're going to adjust right here but what i was going to point out is that i can see a little bit of sediment down in this little valley as i look all the way around they got these little holes drilled in there too it looks like there's a little bit down in there so i want to go ahead and clean this first and i was just giving you a shot of that to uh, show you what we're going to do before we actually start our adjustment so let me get all this cleaned up and then we'll come back and start our adjustment there's the nut right there there's also a nut right there been getting her cleaned out using this uh, crc super degreaser right here and going in here and just kind of Spraying a little bit over there in these divots like that. I've just about got them, but I want to go over them again. And I've got the uh, pig mat over the holes there, like that, to keep uh, anything from washing down into the uh, weep hole for the bearing. But I took my uh, handy little dress to ice pick after I get it in there, and I just kind of move it around the point there, just to kind of agitate it break up the sediment down in there and then soak it up with the rag there just like that and it seems to be working pretty good I, I'm assuming that's what Victor put these little divots in this channel for is to is for the sediment to collect down in there and if that's what it's for it's actually done its job because all of them had sediment down inside there so just about done cleaning this I want to get it good and clean up here first before we move on to the uh, spindle adjustment there. I'm ready to start doing the adjustment on there. I was looking through the manual again, trying to uh, you know, fully understand the build of the spindle here. So one of the, uh, we've got two tapered roller bearings. You got one that's in front of this main gear here. So it actually gets installed from this side. All right, and then you've got another tapered roller bearing here, which is the one that we're adjusting. So we're trying to pull up the slack like this ever so slightly. So I think it's just, got just enough wear or something has moved enough to maybe that's allowing this to jump around now the bearing that's back here is actually a cylindrical roller bearing here so you don't have a tapered bearing in the back i'm assuming that the nut there's a nut on the back side of the spindle here that i think that just holds this bearing in place so you don't have to adjust that right there all right so already got my wrenches pulled out we got a five millimeter socket head bolt there that we need to loosen up for this nut here all right there's that one and let's go ahead and uh, this is also five millimeter all right those are loose there I went ahead and I just grabbed this um, eight millimeter wrench here so it says to loosen this one right here I don't know how much this is where the uh, the kind of guesswork comes in so I'm gonna loosen that one all right let's see if this one actually tightens up any on this side right here not wanting to move might need to go ahead and get something that fits those holes a little bit better it's not wanting to uh, move very much seems tight is what I mean and Let me make sure that I need to if I don't need to back this off anymore
<clears throat> that seems tight. All right, let me do some thinking here and uh, see what we come up with. I was uh, I was measuring the hole diameter I was going to show you. I'm just using my set of gauge pins and just using these to try to figure out the diameter quickly without having to get a little gauge out. So that one fits it pretty good. So just for reference, that was uh, 379 thousandths diameter. I was thinking I, maybe I need to make something to go in there. I don't think I'm going to go that route. What I what I done? I found the uh, largest pin spanner I got, which is this guy right here. And I think what I can do is maybe use this. We'll just have to I'll have to hook it one of those holes and just kind of rotate it around. So it looks like I do have clearance there. And I'll lock this thing in gear like that. And uh, I'll just start with the uh, soft blow and see if I can tap this this um, nut and see if I can get it to move just a little bit. I went ahead and um, made sure that we backed off our nut A right here. See, we've got the, we've got it loose. So let's bump this one with our pin spanner just a little bit and see if we can get it to adjust a little bit because it didn't move very much for me just pulling on it. See, now we're getting somewhere right there. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tighten the, this first one. We're going to go ahead and tighten it back up. Just going to go just to there. <clears throat> and I'm going to take a uh, test cut over here and see if it improved it at all, okay? I'm just going to take this tray, which is clean, and just lay it over right there. I'm going to do a test cut. All right, let's see if we made any difference here. All right, we made some improvement. You can see it's still trying to get back in there to it. The more you cut. All right, that's a huge improvement right there. So I think we're gonna adjust the bearing a little bit more and see if we can get that, continue to get that out of there. spanner there put it in low gear and what did I do with my hammer <laughs> oh here it is over here okay just a little bit there And we're going to make another test cut and see what it does. All right, by the way, I did go back in there and tighten up that uh, nut A, the first nut, after that last clip there. So it's all snug back up properly. And I need to put it in gear. Let's move over here. This is just a scrap piece of uh, steel, by the way, that I've been using. it's still um, still trying to chatter on us a little bit but you can you can tell the difference between that and the first ones right there how loose that was so I'm gonna make another adjustment on it off camera and see if we can continue to improve that right there all right and I'm back Look at the improvement in that, wow.
the tricks, you can see we still got chatter in there, so we haven't eliminated it. But once you start getting chatter into a part like that, it gets it's it can be very difficult to get it back out because the harmonics of the machine and the tool just keeps following that pattern and it just keeps compounding on it, making it worse and worse. Really the way to, to you gotta get under it. So you gotta feed real heavy, but you gotta be careful that you don't overfeed it, you know, and then snap a tool off or cause problems there. I think I might make another adjustment because it seems to just be getting better each time I do it. Feeding a little bit harder this time. All right, so we definitely made some improvements. I'm gonna make one more adjustment on it and see if we can uh, make it a little bit better. All right, I made another adjustment and I feel like we're getting to the uh, max on what we can do because you can see I'm spinning the, uh, the spindle with my hand here in neutral and it actually comes to a stop sooner than what it normally did. Okay, so I think we're, we're probably at our maximum that we can tighten up those uh, tapered roller bearings. So let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and make another cut here, see what happens. Huge difference, huge difference there. Just look at the chatter, the first part, and then improving as we went down there. All right, so I'm calling it quits and I'm going to make sure all these nuts are tightened up properly with the lock nuts and get the cap back on this. All right, we've got the, uh, the nuts, everything's tightened back up and we've got it adjusted, I think, right where it needs to be. I don't think that I could get that any, any tighter than where we're at right there. All right, so I noticed the gearbox is a little low on oil. The uh, sight glass over here is a little deceiving because there's a, there's a blob of oil in there, so it always looks like it's on level, but it's obviously low. So I'm just gonna use, I'm using my uh, multi-purpose Machine oil, 100 weight, or SAE, 30 weight gear oil. Make sure I get a little bit up in that bearing right there. All right, we're coming back here to the smart washer. I want to go ahead and clean out all those, uh, all the counter boards for the socket head bolts are just full of like oil and chips and crud. I've also got the, uh, all the bolts there for the uh, lid. I'm gonna go ahead and give them a cleaning too. I love having this parts washer in the shop here. I just find myself using it all the time for all these different projects we get into. All right, we'll give you a look at the uh, topped off gearbox there with the oil. And it's in there just like it should be. You can see right here on the front of the machine right here, you got your gauge low and high level so i kept adding it a little bit at the time until i actually saw that come up and rise just above that where that h is right there so now we got the proper amount of oil in there i got it in low gear and i'll bump it so you can kind of see see it running there and if you put this in another gear a higher gear it'll just sling oil everywhere that's the only one where it won't sling it All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this button back up and I think we are just about finished. We got the lid completely clean and dry. We're ready to button it back up there. All 
right, and then we got all the bolts clean there as well. And uh, while I get all these in there, I thought I'd show you this. So this is my uh, chuck wrench holder, and this is something that was built by my dad. I'm assuming it was built by dad. I never asked him did he build this, but uh, him and granddad always had these chuck wrench holders on all the lathes. The Monarch's got one that looks just like, except it's only got one tube. And all they did was just one of these uh, bolts, which actually it goes right there. It just bolts down right there in that corner, and that's where we uh, keep our uh, chuck wrenches there. Thought I would show that in case anybody, you know, wants to do that. I, I'm used to my chuck wrenches being like that, and it's always bugged me whenever you run a lathe that there's nowhere to put your chuck wrench. People just have a spot somewhere down here. They lay it down somewhere. I like it up here on the top of the headstock. That's where I'm used to all the lathes. They always had it up here on the top like this. Well, I'm feeling pretty good about the improvements that we just made here on the uh, the Victor. Looking at my cuts there, I know that it's going to make a huge difference as I move forward into some of these projects where I'm grooving or radius cutting or taking a heavy cut in general because it, it chatters too whenever you make a heavy cut. But I think we've uh, improved it. I feel good about the oil. Oil level is right where it's supposed to be now. And I think uh, we're ready to roll with this. Just getting these cap heads properly snugged down. There we go. And then we got our 710 plug right there. Cleaned it off. So this is where you actually top off your headstock on the Victor right here. If you need to add a little oil, just take that plug out and just put it in right there. All right, ready to back, get back in business here. Almost forgot one thing here. This is the mat that you put on the top of the headstock here to protect it. I just went up back there and washed it off in the smart washer and the oil plug actually goes over it just like that. That just helps keep it in place from uh, getting Towed it off there. All right, there we go. Well, I think we accomplished our goal today of getting our main spindle bearings adjusted and trying to get all that chatter out of that, that chuck right there. So I think we did pretty good and I think we met our goal. So maybe this is going to help some of you guys out there. Some of you, know, I know that you have a Victor lathe, but uh, even if you don't own a Victor, this is going to be very similar to how you adjust your spindle bearings on most you know, manual engine lathes like this. But just be sure that you look in your machine manual so that you can uh, see the proper steps that it takes. But it usually is just what you saw here. It's, uh, you know, the, the collar nuts that have to be adjusted so that you can take up the slack in those tapered roller bearings. That's usually all it is. So um, I feel we did a pretty good job on this and I'm looking forward to, you know, whenever I'm doing some machining now, I'm not having to worry so much when I want to go in with that radius tool or that grooving tool and that chatter starts getting in our part. So we'll continue to test it out and see how we improve. There are some other things that I want to do on the lathe, so we're going to slowly, you know, whenever I have time and whenever I can just fit it in, we'll work on some other things on the lathe there as well. But uh, anyway, hope you, hopefully you enjoyed this week's video, and uh, maybe it'll help you out too in your shop. All right, we'll see you next week. Today we are expected to have another hurricane pass through our area. Probably going to be late this evening getting into the overnight hours. So Hurricane Zeta, I think it is, Zeta. And uh, it's out in the Gulf now, but it's moving in real fast. And um, it looks like it's going to hit more over west towards the New Orleans. 
area, maybe into somewhere around Biloxi, Gulfport, the Mississippi uh, Gulf Coast area, it may come on short. So that means again, we're gonna be on the east side of the storm. I don't expect this to be any kind of major hurricane. It's only gonna be a cat one when it hits. And considering that we're pretty good ways away from where the eye may come on shore, I don't think that we're gonna see a lot of problems. We're probably gonna see some gusty winds. We're actually under a tropical storm warning right now. So I'm just getting things prepared right now. Just went and uh, topped off the cars just in case and I got me some extra fuel. So I do have the, uh, the generator right here on the cart. It is ready to go. So one of the uh, fortunate things for us, is we got the camper. So if we lose power here, which it's highly likely that our house here is gonna lose power because this way this whole neighborhood's always been. Anytime there's a little bit of a breeze, a gust of wind, tropical storm force winds, we lose power and we're always like the last people to get the power back. It's just crazy the way the grid works right here. Well, they'll have power across the street out here on the main highways, but the neighborhood won't have power for a while. So if we do lose power, we got the generator there, we can uh, hook up to the uh, camper and stay in that because it is still uh, warm and muggy here, but we can have some AC and sleep in some comfort. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of tell you guys that, that um, we are preparing the day, getting things buttoned up, getting some things put away around here, get the trash dealt with, make sure I had fuel. And I'll have the camera on me this time to uh, if there's any kind of you know major gusty winds, we might get a couple little shots just to share what the storm is like as it uh, passes through this area today and uh, into this evening. So we'll let you know if, uh, if anything major happens here, all right? So I blame it on John Saunders. He, uh, he's the one that talked me into it. He literally didn't talk me into it, but I saw these on his channel. He got some of these and this is what he's been using to move their big CNC machines around. And uh, he recommended them, said they work really good. So I decided to go ahead and pick me up some because I've been wanting some different machinery skates to use in the shop whenever I'm moving some of the equipment around, especially uh, the big shapers right now. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to start on the uh, Smith & Mills pretty soon. I want to be able to move that around whenever I, uh, when I start working on it, get it underneath the uh, gantry crane. So decided to go ahead and uh, get me some of these things right here under John's recommendation. I ordered them from Northern Tool. They, they shipped them in, I went up there and and uh, picked them up. Actually used the contactless delivery. Called them when I got out front and they rolled them out and put them in the truck for me. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. These suckers are big. They're a lot bigger than I thought they were gonna be. I got the instruction book. Yeah. Pretty good size. Swivel rollers look like they got ball bearings in there. They got a grab handle so you can pick them up. And then uh, there's an optional handle that you can attach right here to pull them around, which I did not get that. That's something that we can just make up our, ourselves. Look at that, the top pad rotates there. It didn't say anything about that in the description, so I wasn't sure if that's how that worked or not. That'll make actually moving a, a lot easier there. So they're good for 8,800 pounds. So a little over uh, four tons a piece. I'm looking forward to seeing how they work. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys unloaded and uh, put in the shop. I wanna give the Strongway machinery dollies a little test here on the Smith & Mill Shaper. This was one of the examples of why I wanted to uh, get these after I found out about them. And, uh, saw John using them on the CNC machines. It should work pretty good. I hope with as much surface contact that those all the five of those wheels are going to give Maybe it'll make this job a little bit easier. So this really needs to kind of go outside So that I can get my uh, gantry crane in here to the uh, table for the uh, G&E because we're going to be doing the stoker engine very soon So I want this more mobile So we'll go ahead and set it on there now and I'll just move it around right here. Maybe, you know, see if I can push it over this way just a little bit. But I wanna see if the machine, if I can move it just by, you know, pushing it like that. With, let's just try three of the uh, dollies. What we'll do is we'll put one here up in the front 
and then we'll put one on each back uh, corner there. We got the other one stacked up right there, ready to go. And I also cut these uh, blocks right here out of some, uh, you know, plywood, eight inch square. They'll sit up there and give some more uh, proper friction on the uh, on the uh, machinery dolly right there. All right, so we use my tongue jack right there. Always a uh, real handy tool. That's something that I got off eBay a while back. You've probably seen that. That's such a handy tool to have around here. So we're going to pick this guy up and set it underneath there. I'm probably going to position it more like this because they are so wide and big, which is a good thing. But I don't want I don't want this like sticking out here for me to trip on. So I think we'll just stick it in there with the uh, point of the Pentagon going that way have a little handle out here that you can maneuver it I'll get them up on here and bring you back and see how it moves this thing actually might be in the way right there I'll, I'll give it a shot and see if that works on it all right we're going to repeat this for the back two and i'll bring it back we got all three of the skates on there now i leaned on it kind of hard just to see so i can definitely tell that the swivels you know the casters being in the right position is going to be in your favor when you go to use them to, you know if you're trying to like move it one way and all the casters got to get aligned it's going to be a little tricky because I tried to push it, see, like that. I can get it to kind of shake, but I think you're going to have to use a little bit of force instead of just uh, expecting it to roll. So we got a pry bar right here. See if we can get it to move that way. The uh, pry bar on there, like that. So. I think it's going to take a little bit of effort with the pry bar, maybe even still have to use the, uh, the pallet jack to uh, get it to move where we want. Well, I'm just showing you what I was wanting to uh, do with the cut, start over. So here's what I was uh, getting to right here with moving the, the Smith & Mills over a little bit so I could get the uh, rolling gantry in here over the shapers, you know, for uh, loading up the fixture plate, loading up the stoker engine, and uh, of course removing it too. I just had to tweak it a little bit, get it moved over, but that was a, a little test to see how these little skates are, are going to work. So when we need to, I can take this shaper and move it outside the door there and move it back in, you know, whatever I need to do if I need to clear the, the doorway to get stuff in and out. So, and then the other thing that I have planned for as well these are going to stay underneath there for a while because I want to start rebuilding this machine sometime in the near future. And what I would like to do, we're probably going to scoot the G&E over a little bit and start using this space right here. We're probably going to end up moving my work table here down further. Okay, so we'll actually have a work table to set parts on to, while we're working on it. And I want to be able to have the other shaper, you know, back here in this area so that we can use the uh, gantry crane you know over the machine to pick things up like the ram take the ram off have it here where we can pick the ram up come over here to the table set it down so on and so forth okay so that's sort of my thinking of how i want to uh, do this once i start tearing this machine down i am looking forward to uh, doing a rebuild on this a, a refurbish a recondition make it look good function good fix the things that's wrong with it. This is definitely gonna be a project for the channel here as we move forward. It's looking 
good. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down a little bit closer. Let's check it. I'm gonna flip it over so you can see. Look at that. Perfect. Starting to get that little reddish hue to it. So I'm gonna flip it back over and what we're gonna do is get it up off the intense heat. Bring it all the way to the top. Right there. And I'm gonna let it finish out the cook until we get the proper internal temp going for around 120 internal I want a medium rare so that's what I'm shooting for go ahead and pull it off there I'm gonna wrap it up and we're gonna let it rest for a while and then we'll cut into it there we go incredible <laughs> I'm ready to try it it's gonna be one good tomahawk let's try it all right you ready for this I know I am I know you are Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you hear all the rednecks going by with their <laughs> straight pipe always whenever I'm trying to make a video All right, so there's all the fat Abby hates it hates that but look at this right here See that part of the tenderloin Look at that. It looks perfectly cooked All right, here we go a bomb tomahawk Good. Mm -hmm. He's happy. Mm -hmm. He did the contentment sigh. He's happy. That's good right there. So the grill worked great. Cooked on the MMM grill. And it is great. See all the juice flowing out of there? We got a nice medium cook on that thing. Let's go ahead. I never really got into the heart of the steak right there. I'm going to do another slice. I know everybody usually. They always cut it off the bone, but I'm not everybody else. I'm gonna do it this way right here. And there's a kamikaze fly. So look at that right there. It looks good. Yes, it does. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so good. All right. 